Coffee Park Conversations. So, good evening, everybody. It is late at night. It's 20 to 9, Greenwich Mean Time, sitting here in London. Just uh, recording the first episode of Coffee Pot Conversations. No, not in a coffee shop. No, I'm in a coffee pot. No, I'm having a conversation. However, this is the first instalment of what I'm hoping will be well, quite a few over the next uh, however many years it takes for me to be famous. Don't even need to be rich. Actually, don't need to be famous. This isn't really about me, although it is about me, but this is for other people that think, hmm. Now, I'm not one of those superstars that go, oh, look, it's been easy for me, or it's been difficult for me, and, and I've done this, and I've done that. Pretty much my life is a run of the mill. Yeah, I've had my, my ups, my downs, my plateaus. This is a continuing saga. It's something for me to leave behind, my legacy. I do feel that my mind isn't as, as sharp as it used to be. Um, I am getting older. Um, and my memory is slightly failing at times. Uh, people tell me of, of instances that took place. I, I honestly can't recall them. However, I do take loads of photos, which I do use uh, as memory aids. Um, I also do a lot of writing. I do a lot of blog writing. Uh, in a notebook, and then I eventually type it up, put it on the blog, and this is all to do with everything tied up with the whole podcasty type thing. So that whole minute and and a half has really just gone by without you guys actually knowing anything about what's happening. So let me start from the beginning. My name's Paul. Uh, I live in London, and I go to Paris a few times a year. That all came about. Uh, from a long story, however, what it did do was it enabled me to complete my master's, which I did with the Open University, straight after doing my bachelor's, also with the Open University. Um, back in, I started about 2013, um, a year after my stroke, which happened when I was 36. Um, not great, <laughs> one of those things. Anyway, so I had a stroke. Um, then started the OU looking at, as a way out of the job that I was in, being a parking attendant. I did my bachelor's in religious studies and creative writing. I then wanted to better myself by doing a master's, uh, which I chose creative writing because I wanted a nice, easy topic that was going to hold and maintain my interest and essentially develop what I'd already built on, not just through the bachelor's, but over, over many years of, of just aimless writing. I've written a book before, wasn't particularly very good. Um, it was autobiographically anecdotal. It's what I call a toilet book. It's short paragraphs over a few chapters. It's, you know, complex, but it's, it's um, well, it's out there. So anyway, that's uh, that was that. So I started doing the whole Paris thing, utilised Paris as a theme for my master's, especially for the second year. Uh, when I started writing, uh, each pretty much each assignment was based on a, a trip or however many to Paris, which I was writing as I was going along with the blogs. Then it expanded a little bit into real world situations, uh, um, COVID, Brexit, and all, all the rest of that palaver, um, prime ministers. And I, I just I write about things that are sort of happening. It's not a serious blog. It's not necessarily a, a comedy blog. It's just me writing as I go along. So I've got this blog writing going on in the background. I'm then posting photos onto Instagram, sort of highlighting the fact that I've done the blog. So I'm now developing the Instagram side of things. I'm still doing the blog, uh, updating it as and when I get around to it because I have a full-time job and that's really nothing exciting. It just about pays the bills and provides me with enough money to um, go to Paris a few times a year. I don't lavish it up because money's not that great. I have two uh, two boys which I see at weekends and during the week when I take them to rugby or have them here with me um, just because there's no rugby during the close season of the summer. So that's sort of that. Um, the blog 
the Instagram. It's led on to a few other things. I've read uh, about a dozen books about Paris, generally uh, non-fiction. I've read one or two fiction books. They're, they're quite good. Um, the Paris Apartment, one that I can recommend. Totally taken back by that. Uh, beautifully written. I think it was Lucy Foley, but this podcast, I'm just sitting here watching Coyote Ugly on ITV2, waiting for Love Island uh, to start. It's, I think, season 10, episode 21 tonight. Um, just had Molly evicted from the island. So, ooh. anyway, you can catch up on ITV Play or whatever it's called these days. So, yeah, I've read the books, um, done bits of research. What I want to do is write my own book. So I was going to have the blog as a behind the scenes, keep it rolling kind of thing, and then write a book based on myself with Paris experiences uh, under the, the, the hand or the, the name, whatever you want to call it, An Englishman in Paris. I know Michael Sadler's written a book. Uh, I've read that. That was also quite nice. That was my first uh, read. However, in my uh, university assignments, I'd already coined the phrase for myself, An Englishman in Paris. There's another Englishman in Paris on Instagram. I know this. Um, but on Instagram, I am an Englishman in Paris blog, which used to be an Englishman in Paris 20 until I got the website, an Englishman in Paris dot blog. Uh, and that's where the, the blog site comes in. So it's all round, uh, roundabout type of things. I've already got some chapters uh, or entries of the blog on Spotify and other bits through Anchor, Anchor FM, and they've now been rebranded, taken over, whatever it is with uh, Spotify. So that's uh, Spotify and Anchor and uh, the podcast. So I've, I've done some audio chapters, as it were, which you can just read on the blog anyway. Um, but I wanted to do something a bit different because I, I, I don't like the way that I was writing it and, and reading it. It just didn't sound... I've gone over two or three different ways of, of doing it. Background music, intro in between each uh, paragraph type thing. And then I've sat there pretending to type and you get the clickety-clackety with the mechanical keyboard, which I love the sound of. Um, but it's quite annoying whilst listening to it. So I'm I'm still going to carry on maintaining those, but I may just end up reading it, maybe a little bit background music, because using Anchor now tied up with Spotify, I can sort of have a bit of background music in. I need to look more in-depth into that. Anyway, that's that. So I wanted to write a proper book with everything going on. And then the whole podcasting thing came about. I thought, you know what? This could be a new avenue. It is a new avenue. Um, my girlfriend, Nev, she wants to do um, uh, podcasting about relationships. It would be her and I just talking as normal people, uh, backed up with research that she's going to look into, this, that and the other. So in able for that to happen, I need to know what I'm doing uh, with technology for podcasts. I'm quite good with technology I, I love investigating researching partly why i enjoyed my master's so much uh, and the bachelor's all that study all that research i wasn't particularly uh i'm not gonna say i wasn't good at it at school i was good at it i just didn't do it at school because i couldn't be bothered went to college that was just fun for me i did brick uni for two years but it wasn't wasn't for me um which is why i've ended up doing it again years down the road so do it properly the first time. Saves a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of aggro. Um, and that's that. So that's education taken care of. So back uh, back on track to what these podcasts are going to be. These are going to be, um, in theory, it's not going to happen yet. But in theory, because I'm based in London and I do travel to Paris, I want to have um, just conversations with people, little interviews, um, just real people talking about real things, related to Paris but not solely related to Paris my uh, my big final essay uh, for the uh, my big final assignment for my masters was an Englishman in Paris a master in mastering my masters I didn't completely master it well um, but that was that was a pre-title to one of my many notebooks um, so it's going to be surrounding obviously Paris uh, education and studies it's going to be um, around different things such as food podcasts instagram uh, research and different aspects of paris or travel as well as covid brexit all, all little bits and pieces um, anything that i find interesting that i hope you guys find interesting i say you guys there's going to be no listeners except maybe my oldest 
uh, who is called Rory. Uh, my youngest, Jasper, isn't really into uh, podcasts or Spotify. He does love a bit of Instagram and YouTube shorts. Um, and that's that's sort of it. So that's been uh, 10 minutes of me waffling with no real direction. I haven't scripted it. Again, I'm just a down-to-earth bloke. Uh, I'm a dad uh, of two, two beautifully gorgeous boys. Um, and a boyfriend to a, a, an absolutely fabulously gorgeous girl. Uh, and I live with my uncle. Uh, I'm pretty much in a bedroom, so I could easily get by in a Paris apartment. I know I could do it. I pretty much do it in my own three-bedroom house, um, living by myself in the re- bedroom. The boys come over at the weekend. They have their room. Never comes over a few times a week in my room. And that's that. I don't speak French. Uh, I'm learning through a few different mediums. Uh, Duolingo, which whilst it's great knowing, you know, whatever Duolingo teaches, it's uh, it's also nice to, um, so my legs are just kicking off there for some reason, so I'm not too sure what's happening with that. Uh, this is live broadcasting, although it's not coming across live, and I don't have the ability to edit yet, so I've no idea what you can hear, what you can't hear. But if she don't shut up in a minute, I'm going to smash her in the face. No, I'm not. That's a joke. I'm not a violent man. So, um, yeah, don't speak French. I use Duolingo. I'm also using um, an audio lesson technique from French Today. Um, they sponsored Oliver G's The Earful Tower back in 2019, I believe it was, um, for the year. And I, I took up with them and it's not just straight audio books it's actually quite nice they she the lady Camille, she reads through a story three different speeds it's all on their website um frenchtoday.com or something but it's it's she reads a little story then she goes over the rules of grammar and that's what i find most useful from her picking up the different rules the breakdowns of everything i don't understand tenses all i know the present future and the past the whole rest of it forget it i don't remember learning it in english um i'm way beyond help for that so i'm just going through picking up words google translates my other option uh and just little bits and pieces i pick up from different websites um as i go along just to help so i don't speak french um i've got no financial backing i've got no great research background apart from what i've done i've got no no interviewing experience apart from the jobs that I've held where I've needed to interview uh, prospective employees. Uh, I, I have no connections with France apart from going to Paris. Um, yeah, I am pretty much just a typical Joe called Paul uh, who's got a hobby and I'm running with it. So um, who knows where this will take us, except it probably will take us to 15 minutes of me rambling, little interruption by Alexa, um, and possibly my stomach growling, because it's now nine o'clock. Uh, it's during one of the heat waves of the UK that we're experiencing at the moment, and Love Island's about to begin. So I'm going to sign off, work out how to deal with this stuff, probably upload it to Spotify podcast, and put a separate picture on it. Uh, which will probably be a leather notebook with an Englishman in Paris on it, just to highlight the difference between the audio blog and the um, the podcasting things. So, one last minute. I'm looking, as time goes by, to get different people, as I say, to, to interview, be it face-to-face, uh, um, over the phone, using the apps, microphones, whatever it need be, and just uh, the pumping through different topics on this podcast and then posting it on Instagram, letting people know that the podcast is here and what's going to be happening. I do need a solid uh, 20 episodes maybe before I'm going to publish them once a week and I'm just going to break it down and see what I can do with all of that. Um, so this is Paul signing off at the moment with no music, no no buttons to press for sound effects, no nothing on coffee pot conversations but not in a coffee shop which it was going to be coffee shop conversations but coffee pot just for some reason sounds a bit better nothing to do with drugs um so coffee pot conversations conversations around the coffee pot i don't really drink coffee um i've got a tassimo machine 
it's more about the experience and just having a coffee to relax myself, be creative with it. Um, I do love uh, a boulangerie uh, when I'm in Paris in the mornings, get there at eight, nine o'clock, sit down for an hour or two and I just write. You can catch up all this in some of the blog entries. Um, it, it's been a new way that I've done it recently when I've been to Paris. This year I've done um, the half marathon, the full marathon and the 10k. Uh, when it's just been myself and Nev from the marathon, we sort of, I've left her in bed. She does like to sleep. Uh her her day is sort of kind of like 10 a.m. to midnight, whereas my day is sort of 6 till 10. Um, so we, we, we don't always marry up that side of things, but that's not a problem. I let her sleep. I pop to the boulangerie, grab myself a pan of chocolat, uh, pan suisse, um, choquette, and a tea and an orange juice or whatever it needs to be. Uh, and then when I'm ready to leave, I'll grab a croissant or um, j'aime les croissants and uh, a coffee, cup orange, which isn't really what we're after. We're just after like a, a black coffee, but nobody. Ah, oh, I've just twigged. Or I don't think I do. It's like a black filter coffee. That's all she wants. Um, we say an Americano and they just pop out an espresso and they make it a little bit longer. It's not enough for her. It's too strong, too heavy. Especially if she has about three coffees a day. But anyway, that's um, that's where we're up to at the moment. So, yeah, please stick around. Um, not that you've got anything else to listen to. You can listen to some previous episodes. I've put a paywall on one. Uh, it's the first one. Uh, Je suis estranger or something. I forgot what it's called. That was the piece that I wrote for one of my um, university assignments. Uh, original piece. I think back in 2017, I wrote that for while I was doing a bachelor's, I believe. Anyway, um, that's about my first major trip to Paris. Um, so that's behind a paywall. I think you pay one ninety nine or two two pound or two euros a month. I don't even know what it is. You unlock it and it's unlocked for life. And there's no extra payments. It's just something I was playing with. Um, so I actually pay myself two pound a month to listen to something that I've written and produced and read and listened to. And I'm just paying myself to whatever the currency is a month for that privilege. Um, I may end up monetizing things more. I don't know. It's not my main source of income. So it is it is what it is, as I say, which is an expression I don't really like. But that's it. So nearing the 20 minute mark. I just want to say again, thanks for listening this far. The next few hopefully will be slightly more exciting with direction. I may end up doing bits of research and just relaying those informations. Um, my main concern is going to Paris. They're going to bring out these new passport stamps and all the rest of it because we're, in, we're out of the, the EU, we're in the, the Schengen or whatever it is uh, bit until I've done my research. And... Uh, they're ruining it for everybody because the UK government, despite all these promises, really ruined everything. Um, Brexit was sold as a dream. If they'd have run it properly with a business attitude, it could have worked well for the UK. But we had, in my opinion, I'm not political, we had a bunch of, of numpties running the circus. Uh, and that's it. I'm not political. Uh, all my opinions are my own, and they're purely based on me, my interpretation, my research, uh, and things like that. Um, but don't let that put you off. This really won't affect much. Um, I will cover topics that you know are debatable, and that, that creates conversation. As long as we respect each other's wishes and views, happy days where I'm concerned. Another reason why I studied religion was for... Um, I forgot what the word was now. But it, it's tolerance. There we go. It's tolerance and understanding. Yes, you believe in this. I respect that. Just don't throw it down your throat. And I respect your belief. You respect my belief. So, yeah, religion, politics, uh, great debatable uh, topics. Yeah. Um, and that's that. So I shall leave you now with a 20 minute little podcast to listen to. I'm not going to promise that the next one will be any better, but I will certainly do my best to come up with some uh, nice material for you. So until then, this is Paul, an Englishman in Paris, saying goodnight 
for the Copper Pot Conversations. Thank you very much and good night. Coming up on Coffee Pot Conversations. We have interviews, we have historical pieces, and we have informative pieces. We may even have some entertaining pieces. So stay tuned to An Englishman in Paris, Coffee Pot Conversations. Coffee Pot Conversations.